Okay, so when we were talking about Gage's orders, what were the orders that... Okay, you already have Gage's order, but I'm going to pop that up there. What were the orders that Gage gave? What were the first two orders, Abby? Rest and And? Destroying Good. So when, where were his troops to go arrest Hancock and Adams? Where were Hancock and Adams supposedly at what town? Austin? Lexington. Lexington. And then they were con to continue on to what town where the ammunition was supposed to be? Brennan? Concord. Concord. Good. All right, so now I'm going to do a little bit of talk about these two towns, Lexington and Concord. All right, so it's April 19th, 1775. That's your year. And so their first uh, order is to head to Lexington, arrest Hancock and Adams. So about 700 troops in the morning of April 19th, 700 British troops, arrived in Lexington. They arrived there, and they found... Uh, the colonists with about 70 militiamen waiting to the uh, British 700. So if I were you, I might write 700 British versus 70 colonists. Wow. I didn't know how full you wanted. No, well, that's perfect because then we it lasts the rest of the day, so just throw it in there. All right, so 700 British soldiers are there and 70 colonists. All right. So they get there, and when they get there, the British commander orders you? over there where you got it. Orders the colonists to, you know, drop your weapons. You need to put your weapons down, drop your muskets, everything they've got. And the colonists did what? What did they say? Did they drop their weapons because that's what the British said, Deb? No, they, they refused to do so. They refused to do so. And so, shh. I think so. Okay, so they refuse to do this, and within a few minutes, shots are fired, and nobody knows which side fired first. Was it the British or the colonists? No one really knows, okay, but they know the shots were fired, and this shot that was fired uh, was, became known as what? So the, an author wrote about this in the book. It's famous. Uh, the shot heard around the world. The shot heard around the world. This is the famous first shot of the Revolutionary War. Ra War. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote in a book later, and he claimed the colonists were the first to shoot, shoot but it was known as the shot heard around the world because it was a huge deal that the um, colonists and the British were going to be fighting. Okay. So within minutes, this shot was fought, fired, and then eight militiamen were dead. Some others were injured, and that became that in Lexington. That wasn't a huge battle, just a small skirmish, and onward the British head. Okay, then they head to the, what was the next town they were heading to, Max? Concord. Concord. And when they get to Concord, we've got a little different situation, all right? When they get to Concord, how many militiamen and minutemen are waiting for them in Concord? Austin? 4,000. 4, so you 4,000 militiamen and minutemen to the 700 British. So now the British are outnumbered. And they lined the road, and they, you know, as soon as the British got there, the first thing they did was ordered, you know, tried to get some of their weapons. They were able to get some cannons and such. But then here come the colonists, and they just put them down. They destroyed them. And what were the British forced to do? Retreat. retreat. Got the heck out of there. They were forced to retreat. Um, they scrambled and headed back to Boston because they knew that they couldn't handle what they had there in Concord. So these two places, Lexington and Concord, became known as your first two battles of the Revolutionary War. This shot heard around the world. They celebrate this day, April 19th, every year, um, in Massachusetts and Maine. Why would they celebrate this in Maine when it happened in Massachusetts, Hunter? Because Maine was part of Massachusetts. Because Maine used to be part of Massachusetts. Go ahead. All right. So every year, uh, this April 19th is known as Patriots Day here. They celebrate the shot her around the world. They uh, get together. Uh, actually, they do it on the third Monday of April, so it's not necessarily always April 19th. But they have... Uh, Nearby towns, Concord, Boston, all those towns, they do little reenactments and so on. It's also the same day that the Boston Marathon is run. 
Okay, what happened this year in Boston at the marathon, Abby? The bombs went off. Okay, so it wasn't a very good Patriots Day for the people of Massachusetts this year. Okay, but that Mar Boston Marathon is run, Patriots Day, they have their reenactments, all that stuff goes on on the same day. All right, um, I want to show you a short video clip on these two battles. There we go. I have a commercial for Maybe. Let's do a wake up call. Let's meet the commercial. That took a little while to go to your locker, huh? It's April 19th, 1775. The sun is rising on the village of Lexington, and the first battles of the Revolutionary War are about to begin. 700 British soldiers march into Lexington at daybreak. They're on their way to Concord with orders to confiscate hidden weapons. Waiting in a tavern for the British are 77 colonial militiamen, a group of untrained soldiers. We're talking about a bunch of farmers. Very, very part-time soldiers. And they're facing these impressive-looking ranks of red-coated British soldiers. The colonists aren't surprised to see the British. In fact, they've been warned by spies like Paul Revere, who spent the night before riding through the area on horseback, giving out information on British troop movements. They're all standing there. They're all armed. And nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. And then... Somebody fired. Nobody knows to this day who fired first. But once the shooting started, then everybody, all these armed men, leveled their weapons, began blasting away. Eight colonists fall dead or dumb, ten more wounded. The victorious British regroup and begin marching towards Concord. In nearby Concord, the British discover the weapons they're looking for, three massive cannons, and smash them. But the colonists confront them on a bridge just outside of town battle erupts. Dozens die on both sides, but here the colonists defeat the British, who retreat back towards Boston. The colonists can't believe they've won. At the time, nobody realized what the significance of this skirmish was. It was Americans against British on this one war. But it turned out that this skirmish was the first battle of the American Revolutionary War. It was the first step for American independence. So now is the time for people to start choosing uh, who they're going to side with it's because there's battles going on and it's inevitable that war is going to happen. All right, so hold on one second. So. So if someone was going to be siding with the British and remaining loyal to the British th throne and fighting with them, what would they be known as? The remaining loyal to the British. Oh. Cooper? What would they be known as? Loyalists. Very good. The loyalists were the people that supported the British side, and lots of people did. If you were a re rebel and siding with the colonists and choosing to fight with the colonists or not fight but at least support that side, who what were you, Keegan? Patriot. You were a patriot. Well, this started to divide the families and divide communities and friends and things like that because just because you were in the same family didn't mean that you all chose the same side. Benjamin Franklin chose to be a patriot, a rebel. His son chose to remain loyal to Britain. And if you think about it, that's a big deal back then. And... That was that it for them. They no longer probably communicated because they were supporting different sides in this whole situation. Lots of families were like that. If you believed one thing, you, you're going to support one side or the other. So it really divided up a lot of people because of 
who you were supporting. And it became very difficult. And as we talk about the war a little bit more next, probably next chapter, you'll see how people were divided with the fighting, and we'll talk about the breakdown of who were what sides and what ended up happening to this loyalist. We already know who wins the war. It's no surprise. But what will happen to these people that remained loyal to the Brit British? Do you think they're going to stick around in the colonies and people will like them? I mean, are they going to have to get the heck out of there? I wouldn't want to be living with them. Trade, they seem like traitors, right? That's what they are.